Well, hi boys and girls, it's Sir Berticus again with another episode about the Genesis Starliner. If you haven't seen my first video about this ship, then I suggest you go see that one, and I'll put the link in the description below. While the Genesis Starliner was first introduced to us, it came with some hints about what possible future variants there might be. Many of those were of a military sort, but I'd like to stay focused on the civilian types for now. And the two that stand out the most are the Yacht Style and the official Imperator 1 which compares to Air Force One, which I hope we're all familiar with. Now the actual Imperator One will be a highly specialized one-of-a-kind version we'll never get to own or ever get inside of, so I'm not even going to attempt to draw that one. But what I can do is to make a corporate CEO version that players could own someday and have, the, have it capable as being a yacht-style variant at the same time. So the obvious two competitors to this Genesis variant, which I'll just refer to as the Luxury Liner for now since I don't have an official name for it, uh, are the 600i Touring and the RSI Phoenix, uh, both of which are limited, meaning you cannot simply go into the pledge store on any day and purchase one. So the Phoenix has capacity for three wealthy guests, while the 600i can accommodate up to five. Since I'd like the Luxury Liner to outclass both of these, I'm aiming to get that capacity up to 8. Furthermore, I'd like to have the uh, Luxury Liner to still be somewhat capable of a regular passenger ship function, as well as being a true flying office like you'd expect from a corporate flagship. Now, I know the last video got rather lengthy, so I won't get bogged down too much with uh, background exposition, so we'll just go straight into the floor plan. Okay, so here we are. Uh, now the first thing I'd like to point out is that CIG in no certain terms ever promised that this version of the Genesis Starliner would ever exist. Um, so this is all speculative. Now we don't have a name for it either. It's still the Genesis Starliner, but here on the right hand side I've come up with a few suggested names. Uh, for the time being I'm just going to call it the Luxury Liner because I have nothing else to work with. On the left hand side here I did add my own little description, so this is a limited version of the Genesis Starliner. It's geared towards those who project their power and success upon others. Uh, that implies that this is an end game ship, this is not something you start the PU with, this is something that you eventually graduate or build up to um, as you become bigger and stronger in the verse. Used by government and corporate types alike, this unique variant can serve as either a place of business abroad as well as a January genuine luxury liner to take wealthy patrons on a tour. So this could be both an origin touring ship as well as a flying office. Interior detailing far exceeds the quality of the standard Genesis and it comes with a larger radar and extra power core. So being a special variant, being very limited, um, it should have a couple of things that the other or standard uh, Genesis won't have. Uh, now when I draw my, my floor plans, the seats, the corridors are all going to look the same. You're just going to have to imagine that the quality of the materials have been upgraded to marble, mahogany, I mean, let your imagination go wild here for a moment. Um, we'll get to the Raider and the extra power core here in a moment. Going into the concept specifications, um, the dimensions, well I said before the height is probably going to be more like 20 meters, that still stands, the crew has now gone from 4 to 12, while the passengers has gone down from 40 to 20, but you could bring that up to 28. The difference of these 8 is the same difference between 4 and 12. It all depends on the ratio that you want to put in between passengers and crew. Um, but that'll become more apparent later on as we look at some of the uh, multi-use or multi-purpose uh, cabins. Cargo capacity, it's now fixed at 234. So that's actually a nerf from the standard version. If you really want to go and haul as much cargo as possible, I suggest you just get the standard Starliner. This does include 16 SU of shielded cargo, uh, something that the standard version doesn't have. Raider, it's now been upgraded to one large. Two reasons, first of all, I want to show you guys what it might look like if you do put a large Raider in here. And second of all, the best defense is uh, knowing what's out there. So if you have a large radar, you can see the bad guys coming a lot sooner and from further away. So if you're going to put some very important persons upon this version of the Starliner, I would suggest you put a large radar on there. Um, oh, actually, there's a third version as well. If I do uh, make a military version of this ship, then it will definitely need a large radar, especially if it's for command and control. But we'll get into that maybe in a third video. 
computers, everything else here is still the same. The power core has now been upgraded to two mediums. And the reason I was able to put a second medium uh, component in is because life support has now been brought down from three down to two. Um, there's not going to be more than 50 people aboard this ship, so I don't need that third life support unit. Hence, I can go with dual redundancy on the power cord. Let's move over to the right. Now, you've probably already started looking at this. The cockpit is the same. The lobby is the same, except what some of you may have noticed, I've put it in a bulkhead door. This bulkhead door should really be on the standard version as well, so at some point I'm going to go back to the uh, regular star liner and I'll be adding this in there as well, which is going to make the ship about 30 to 40 centimeters longer, which I didn't reflect in the stats, but you know, I'll, I'll make that change in there. Uh, three reasons for this. First of all, it's to avoid the visual distraction for passengers looking down the big hole or this, this staircase, as well as if you ever get boarded, this is just an extra uh, door to keep the bad guys out. And for the one that I found more uh, uh, important is that um, if this ship ever accidentally hits something along the way and the front staircase breaks off, then you'll vent the entire ship. So this is just like a secondary airlock door uh, to prevent venting. Uh, guest capacity, ad hoc seating for 16. And you'll notice that this section over here is exactly the same as in the original one. And that is because I still wanted to retain some capability for this Starliner or luxury liner to still uh, tr uh, uh, transport regular passengers. So if you had to, or if you see an opportunity, you can still take 16 passengers on board and transport it just like you would in the regular Starliner. An executive suite. Um, in the regular version, you may remember that there was a fourth uh, state room, which was uh, one of the modular options. I've simply expanded that, so that's now the presidential suite, the executive suite, whatever you want to call it, is just a bigger, better suite. Uh, the guest state rooms, three, same as with the previous version, uh, just have to imagine that it has better quality materials in there. Mahogany, marble, you name it. And then the more interesting thing uh, is mixed accommodation. So these are cabins that can be used either for crew or for guest. You want more guests? Well, you're gonna have less crew. If you want more crew, then you won't be able to board as many guests. Um, that is an option for you to decide as an owner. Dining service, yes, it now has a full kitchen on board with a capacity to seat eight. So let's go for, actually, maybe I should zoom in again. Let's go up to 20, there we go. The docking port, the galley is the same, and you'll notice there's another bulkhead door over here. Now this is the last bulkhead door before we get to the balcony, so when you stand on the balcony on the top floor in the back of the ship, this is as far as you can see. This door also provides privacy for the people that are dining uh, back here. The dining room has been completely changed. And before we get into the details, um, here's something that Kelly Kaplan, the CEO of Crusader Industry, said or actually will say since it's in the future and since it's in the future you can't prove to me that she didn't say that honestly really <laughs> or maybe I'm just making this up sometimes it's not about how many passengers you can see to board a ship but rather who you have aboard your ship who you know and who you get to meet are part of many success stories and this is where the luxury version of the Genesis comes into the story to play its part so it's not about getting as many people on board and raking in the money from all the seats that, that you're selling. This is about getting very important people on board, stars, famous people, influential people, and getting them to mix and mingle and make deals aboard the ship. Going back to the dining room, um, the first thing I should point out, all the dimensions are the same. The windows have changed. So you now have one large window on the side here while the uh, corner windows have shrunk a little bit. As you come in through this door, uh, you are faced with a privacy wall. Now, there could be a logo on the wall, it could be a water feature, I mean, it's whatever CIG decides on. Um, you could go to the left, which will get you to the dining table, but your eyes are probably more drawn towards this shorter trip, which is the proper way to go. Uh, this is a busboy or a waiter station. Um, this is where you keep the knives, the forks, the extra glasses, and as well as garbage disposal. Uh, two tables. Table for two, for a little bit more intimacy or privacy, and then a big table for six. Now, if CAG wants to make this modular, then I suppose uh, you could make this table go away, turn it into a dance floor. But 
uh, for the most part I would suggest you just keep the table in place. It's not only for dining, it's also for business meetings. For that reason, there is a uh, TV or a projection screen on the back here if you want to uh, make some presentations. Now, a lot of you are probably already looking at what these two circles are over here. This was a bit of a conundrum for me because somewhere or another, the kitchen, which happens to be below the dining room, has to bring the food up. Now, logically, you would say, why didn't you put it here in the waiter service station? Well, the reason for that is that there's nothing below there. The bottom deck, or what used to be the cargo deck, it's a lot narrower. So its hull ends right around here and right around here. So the only way for food to come up is somewhere here in the middle, which caused a problem. Um, so I had to put it somewhere. So this is a dumbbell waiter where two plates side by side can come up and if you can stack it just like you might do on a, on a real cruise ship, you could have either four or six plates come up at, at a time. I realize the location is not ideal, but it works. And since I've already drawn out the kitchen, I really don't feel like changing it. Uh, grand piano, because everybody likes to eat to music, why not? And there's just an extra chair over here. Whoever gets uh, excluded from the, uh, the meeting or whoever just wants to sit uh, by themselves. Could even be a security guard for all we know. Moving further aft, not much here has changed. We've got the same two toilets as before and the little half staircase that comes up, the transverse corridor with the same windows, the medical cabinet, and let's get into the good part. So, the same main corridor that you need in order to get to the crew habitation and recreation area as well as the engine room. The original version had sleeping pot chambers, three on either side. Now, this may look the same, but it's not. Instead of having the Vanguard type of sleeping pots, these are now proper beds, but they're bunk beds, kind of like what you see on the uh, Hercules M2. Um, and there's only two beds per cabin now, instead of four. Uh, you do get a desk with your own uh, TV screen, and you have a half locker stacked on top of each other that you have to share. Uh, as I wrote in here, crew or guest, this is up to you. Do you want to sell it as uh, a guest room? Then, you know, you get some money out of it. Do you want your guests to have more service and uh, give a better review? Well, then you put some crew in it. Um, you might have two security guards or um, soldiers here in, in one room, a piano player and the kitchen chef in another room, and then you'd have two more rooms that you can either... Um, rent out uh, individually or you can have people bunk up in here. I mean, it, it's entirely up to you how you want to um, sell your, your or use your cabins here. The important thing to point out, there are no bathrooms. So these are not state rooms, these are just guest rooms. For the crew, pretty simple. You can, since you're a crew, you can get through all these doors towards habitation and use the regular habitation bathrooms. Or if you want and you're a guest, you can always use, oh, we just lost this back in. Uh, you can always use these regular bathrooms up front. Now these don't have a shower. Uh, in this game you only go to the bathroom maybe once a day, once a couple of days. You only need to shower maybe once a week. So uh, since you don't use it that often I actually created a uh, bathroom or with a shower up on top. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, there is a cargo bay here so this is more or less a hybrid module uh, the cargo lift is there the ladder is still there and here we have our shielded cargo 16 SCU uh, kind of the same as with the Mercury Star Runner except uh, it's now in two ranks instead of one rank there's an armory uh, I've got eight guns drawn in here probably some pistols and ammunition as well maybe there should be some cabinets on the side here for some uh, torso leg arm helmets uh, anything along that type one thing you will not see on this ship are proper suit lockers for heavy armor. It's not a combat ship. This is not a military ship. Um, you can dress yourself up in light or maybe some medium armor pieces. There's, there's no heavy duty armor suit lockers on this ship. Uh, one more change that I should point out is uh, we've got the two life support units over here because the uh, occupancy will be under 50 and the third life support unit has now been converted to another medium power core. So now we have one large, two medium, I'll call that double redundancy, 
Um, well, because these are very important people that you're carrying, so double redundancy is always good. That out of the way, let's move upstairs. This was harder to draw than it appeared. So the lift is still here, the staircase is still here. You have um, a standard corridor. Here is the bathroom that I've expanded this time around. So now it's a proper novelty crusader style bathroom with a shower head. And since you're going to be changing your clothes, you need a locker and I just put in a sink with a mirror. And you end up with double doors, but you know, so be it. Three regular state rooms, identical to what I had before, except that the chairs might be nicer, more opulent leather, better carpeting, maybe mahogany wood. I'll leave that up to the artist to make it look more fulfilling and enriched. Uh, the bar section over here has now been opened up. I've made it a little bit deeper as well so that we can have more variety of snacks, sandwiches, anything that the boss wants. Uh, you can get it. Um, who's going to get it? Well, that would be your personal secretary who will be sitting here at the desk with an eye on your front door. Um, she has computer interface, she has a chessboard if she wants to play with, say, a security guard that sits there, or maybe he or she sits here with a pistol on the side as a security guard as well. It's whatever you guys want. The mix master, of course, is still here as well. Going into the executive suite, um, I'm not saying it's a perfect layout, but this is the best I was able to come up with. So immediately on your left, you have your display cases, your trophy cases, if you like with a bench or couch for two people to sit on, a visitor to sit at your desk, you have your own corporate desk with your own seat, and a couple of lockers or filing cabinets to put whatever you want in there, um, and a window that looks out towards the balcony. There is a door into the balcony. Now, I wish I was able to use the balcony to its full potential here, but I couldn't. From this balcony, of course, you can look out not into the toilets, you can look out onto the dining uh, room. Going into the bedroom, uh, you have a large bed this time, you have some closet space, lockers, I mean, I'm sure CIG can fill this all up. Uh, there is a window here on the side into the balcony, I imagine CIG would also want to put a big window here at the, the end of the bed. Uh, as long as it's one of those windows that you can look out of, you don't want to look into, I'm pretty sure the people in the dining room don't want to look and see what's going on in the bedroom. Um, down here the door into your bathroom so um, I'll leave this up to CIG to dress it up in full luxury um, you have a mirror sink proper shower this time a separate uh, toilet and just a little shelves um, notice I didn't place any modular options in here this is pretty much it if CIG wants to come up with some modular changes I'll leave that up to them I'm just gonna post this for now moving down to the cargo deck Something that most of you have probably already thought about is what kind of vehicles can I put in here? Well, it's still 198 SCU. That hasn't changed. You can still put all that cargo in here, but just for fun, I thought I'd show you in the proper skill what it would look like to put vehicles in here. Um, if you wanted to, you could have two Ursas and two Cyclones. The cargo lift, the ladder, the lift is uh, still the same. Now this is where things change a little bit. Um, in the previous version I had shown the cargo go right up to the firewall which violated the Crusader style so in this particular case I decided to go and put the novelty wall sections in with the sloping walls that you can't put any cargo on uh, with just an aisle down the middle. Uh, this is only for 20 SCU. It doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, two things of note first of all Yes, you can put a cyclone in here. As a matter of fact, in the original version, I forgot to mention why the door would open so wide. That is because you can put a cyclone in there. But as a matter of fact, you were able to put two cyclones in there. In this particular case, I've already measured it out. You can put one cyclone in and you can still walk all the way around. The reason this got uh, shortened to just 20 SCU is because the kitchen's coming up. So if the chef wants fresh lobster, potatoes, mushrooms, he can get it here from food storage or the big fridges and then of course you've got a uh, proper counter stove and you've got the dumbbell waiter to bring the uh, prepared plates with food up uh, stairs straight into the dining room uh, two by two SCU I hope that's big enough for at least one chef to walk around maybe two and we'll move forward by the way I did mention that the uh, waiter station upstairs had maybe a garbage disposal which would be over here which ironically would dump it right out into space <laughs> I'll let you think about that 
Um, here we go into the gravity room. Now in the previous video I had the gravity ball in the middle, but I also said that if CAG ever wants to put a large radar in, this is probably the best place to put it. So I've moved the, uh, the gravity ball to one side and a large radar on the other side. You still have the two medium-sized batteries. The two lifts are still the same. The EVA prep room is still the same and the front of the ship is still the same. With that, we are done and I'll just zoom it out again. Um, it's just one picture this time. Uh, this will go up on Spectrum and uh, I'll be looking forward to hear from all your feedback.